Hi everyone, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Carlson's Lab. I've had many questions about the generator project here and on Patreon, so why don't we head back to the homestead and take a look in the garage, and I'll show you how far I've come with the generator project. So, let's go. Hi everyone, and welcome to the homestead and my messy garage. Anyways, this is the generator project, and this is how far it's come since you've seen it before. So those of you that watched the previous generator video, this is what it looked like on the top section here before. You'll notice that the top section is twice as long and it's you know, held up by some sawhorses. So what I ended up doing was cutting that down in half and then on this side here, I ended up you know, chopping that half off and putting it on the bottom with some square stock and then adding some wheels and you know extending the angle iron frame putting an exhaust system on it and welding a, a battery holder with a little battery box on the bottom there and then I have a jerry can over here which acts as a fuel tank so on the bottom of that is a little gas tap and that works very very well so it works well for a fuel tank and no leaks and seals up really good now for those of you that know HDPE Nothing glues to it, so everything is gasketed on the bottom of the tank. So what I ended up doing is using a, a transmission, a B&M transmission drain plug setup. So most transmission pans on the bottom of vehicles don't have a drain plug, so this is a little adapter kit. And I didn't use the factory shim that they, that they provided with it. I used some rubberized gasket paper on each side and it's been holding up very well. So in order to test that to make sure that it doesn't leak because of course you know it's on the bottom of the the jerry can is I filled it half full of gas and shook it around until the thing looked like a balloon so there's lots of pressure in it and I let it sit for a few hours and no leaks with of course the gas tap you know blocked off right so that worked out very very well and that's on the bottom half and on this side here, as I mentioned earlier, recall that this is, was twice as long, right? So the person that had originally welded this welded just the top sides here and the frame was actually bending outwards just from lifting it because of the weight of this thing, right? This thing is incredibly heavy. I lifted this whole thing up with a cherry picker. Right, so I put a chain around here and then lifted this thing up with an engine hoist or cherry picker, whatever you want to call it, and lifted the whole thing off and, and then remounted it back on once everything was done. So it was on and off this a bunch of times as I was sizing things up and it just happened to work this way. So what I ended up doing was welding this on the insides as well. So I don't know if you can see that in there. It's kind of dark here, but you know, I ended up welding it on the insides. I left the these welds alone. The person that had this or put this together before me just welded this, and it kind of okay welds, and they held up. Again, it was just bending, so I stopped doing that, or I stopped, uh, you know, lifting it by the side rails because I didn't want this to come off. Right? It's just strong, you know, but it was just, you know, you know, not as strong as it should be. So I just, you know, reinforced everything and welded everything really well. And that turned out pretty good. So what I'll do is I'll start this thing up. So there's a little electric fuel pump on the bottom down here, 12 volt electric fuel pump. And you can see there's a fuel filter down there from the actual tank. All right, and then there's another fuel filter here. So I added a prime button on the top. And I haven't completely cleaned this thing up yet. It's still a mess. I'm basically sizing things up. Eventually, I'll probably take this whole thing off and repaint it, but the thing runs like a clock. So anyways, I'll press the, uh, the prime button up here. Hold it for about five seconds just to get fuel back up in there again. And I'll hit the start. So it's actually quite quiet. 1800 RPM generator. And it's just extremely strong. So I've loaded this beyond its maximum. So I've loaded this beyond its maximum and I've actually powered up our entire house on this thing already and it 
doesn't miss a beat. Just runs nice and fine. So no problems with that. That worked out really, really well. So I'm quite happy with this thing. You're probably saying, well, why did you put all this time into this generator, you know, when you could have just bought something? Well, it's 1800 RPM. It's quiet. It'll last forever. These things are incredibly dependable generators. And if the power does go out at the house for an extended period of time, this will provide me with electricity, you know, very dependably. So we live in an area where we do get power outages and sometimes it's been out for an extended period of time. So I want something that's going to be you know, quiet or quieter than something that's racing at 3600 RPM or you know, something like that, right? So that worked out very, very well. I'm happy with that. Anyways, as we're in here, we as well take a look at this stuff. So this is all tubes. Everything in these boxes here is all vacuum tubes are full. You'll recognize the scopes from, you know, another video. Now, many of you said don't bother with them, and I do agree because it's just an incredible amount of work to try and get those things going. Maybe one day. Definitely not now. Take a look at this. Nice old national receiver on the bottom that will end up getting a restoration. This is really neat. This is a broadcast transmitter, a small one right down here. That's the uh, modulation transformer and power supply down in there. This is just something laying on it. And uh, this is the RF section up on the top. It's made by McCurdy. So it's got four 6146s as the RF finals. And it has two on the bottom for modulators. And then, of course, there's rectification in there as well. You can see some selenium rectifiers down in the bottom. It's kind of neat. Some communications monitor, CE5. And just some more scopes for parts and pieces. Some future projects. A neat old television right on the top there. If I remember correctly, I believe that's a Hoffman. So I end up going through that. B and K analyst. These are some of the welders and stuff that I'm using here to work on this thing. That I was using to work on the project. Some amplifiers right here that came out of movie theaters. Big amplifiers. Those are going to end up being projects. I've already talked about this on Patreon. So there's going to be a bunch of uh, projects, a bunch of amplifier builds using older amplifier components. So that should be a lot of fun. Let's see. Big old scope here. Just more parts and pieces. Heathkit DX100 uh, cases. Hammerlin case over there. Some boxes full of parts. Over here, this is all tubes up here as well. And, you know, some other projects down here, excluding the old air conditioner, which still works. But it's just uh, needs a good cleaning. And that's pretty much it, what's going on here. So at any rate, that's the generator project and uh, what's in the garage at this time. So maybe when this thing is installed, I'll have another update on this thing again. As I say, the thing just runs like a clock. So very, very happy with that project. Oh, there's a Raquel RA17C12. That's a parts unit for the other two that we're going to end up restoring back at the lab. So the other two look like they're pretty complete, but this has a good... Let's see, move this out of the way. This here has a... Look at how badly abused this thing has been. So purchase for parts, but this one here has, you know, good parts and pieces in it. As you can see, the film is still good. Don't want to move that too much. It sounds like it's scraping and dragging on something in there. So there's a, some more parts right there for that. If you're enjoying these videos, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and then hang around. There'll be more videos like this in the near future. We'll be taking a look at vacuum tube and solid state electronic devices alike. So if you haven't subscribed, now would be a good time to do that as well. And if you want to be notified as soon as I post a new video, don't forget to tap the bell symbol. If you're interested in taking your electronics knowledge to the next level and learning electronics in a very different and effective way and gaining access to many of my personal electronic designs and inventions, you're definitely going to want to check out my ongoing electronics course on Patreon.
I'll put the link just below the video's description, and I'll also pin the link right at the top of the comment section. So if you click on the link, it'll take you right there. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.